This is Rostra, the St. Theodore Guerin Junior Classical League podcast, where we bring the lessons of classical study into the light for the benefit of all. Welcome to another episode of Rostra. Uh, We've got Katie Kolb here, and she is a freshman in first year Latin. Not sure when this episode is actually coming out, but I will say it's a topic that really would be appropriate, perhaps around Halloween. Katie, talk to us. What is your topic and why did you pick this? So I chose Roman funerals because I feel like when a lot of people talk about like ancient Rome and like people think of like Julius Caesar and like Roman soldiers and all stuff like that, yeah. I feel like I wasn't, I don't really think about like funerals yeah, <laughs> a lot. And right. so it just seemed like something that I wanted to research because I hadn't heard a lot about them. I think you're right. I think a lot of people, as they think about the ancient world, especially Rome, it's really big stuff, right? And stuff they've seen in movies. And like you said, Julius Caesar, Roman army, all this, all this kind of big imagery stuff. These are people <laughs> just like anybody else. And so everything from the big to the, to the small and the mundane and the everyday and, and obviously funerals are sadly but a, a part of that. So, uh, okay, what did you find out about Roman funerals? So, there's a lot of things about them yeah. all, all over. And the main thing that people, like, that articles would talk about was like the five things they talked about, which was uh, the procession, the cremation, the eulogy, the feast, and the commemoration. But I think what was really cool is that like so many things from like the past are like brought like a eulogy is still like going on in funerals which i thought was really interesting about how many things like related to like how we do our funerals absolutely and actually we sometimes get into some stuff about roman funerals in second year latin uh so next year for you and and you're right there's a lot of elements in their funeral rites uh if you will uh, that, that we have in ours the eulogy being one and um so who knows who's listening to this, may even have some younger listeners. Uh, what What is a eulogy? So it would be like if you were like more well-known or people like liked you yeah, better, yeah, yeah. then someone would like talk about you and your life and like they would help other people like remember you and like it would just be talk about you. Absolutely. And in fact, eulogy comes from a couple of Greek words. It actually means to speak well about somebody. So yeah, you're remembering the good things a person did and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the eulogy, we still have that sort of thing. You mentioned several other things. As you were going on the list, I'm thinking, yeah, we have that, we have that. What were some of the things else that you thought were similar to you? And then we're going to get to some differences as well, but um, what are some other similarities? So they had a procession where, like, the more wealthy or known you were, they would do, like, a bigger procession. And one thing that was really interesting is they would hire, like, professional, like, mourners Yes. And they would have these women that would like cry, like act around you and like act like you're crying. So like the more wealthy you were, the more mourners you would have around you when you were being processed while you were dead. Yes. So now we're obviously recording this shortly after the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II of, of Great Britain. Uh, the whole world has been watching that uh, in, in the past few weeks. And you want to talk about somebody who is... Uh, a big figure, obviously, queen of a country. Her procession went on for days, right? And there's all this this sort of thing. Even with that, though, she did not have professional mourners. I always find that one of the most amusing things. And I'm thinking, what does your business card look like, you know? Hi, my name's Marcus. I'm a professional mourner. <laughs> How does one get that job? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, that was weird. Yeah, to have people who... Be, but you're right. The idea was the more you have in the procession, the more people you have weeping and wailing, that shows the, the importance of that person yeah. uh, who had passed. So. And then another thing they did was, like, they would have people dress up as your past ancestors. Yes. Because ancestry was, like, a huge thing. Yes. And then they would have them as, like, your personas, like, and they would act as them. Yes. Is, it's funny how much acting was, like involved in these funerals. It was, and, and you, you want to think about it really in terms of drama, and it's almost like reenactment. So one of the things they did was to make a death mask of the person who had, had passed away. They would actually make a mask uh, of that person, and then usually the, the oldest living male would keep those masks 
in the home. So it's this constant reminder of all of the, of the ancestors. Then when the next person in the family passed away, the other members of the family would take those masks out and that's what they would hold up to their faces in that procession, exactly what you were talking about. And it symbolized, here's all the, the past ancestors welcoming the newest member of the family to the underworld. So, so yeah, we don't do that one. <laughs> yeah, no, that was definitely a difference. And then cremation and burial is yeah. also a big thing now, which the Catholic Church recently allowed cremation, right? Or more recently than not. And we'll just kind of have to forgive our, our bell there. We are recording during uh, school time, so um, that's to be expected. So, yeah, and, and one of the things about cremation uh, in the ancient world, you've got to remember that not trying to be indelicate here, but when you've got dead organic matter, okay, there, there are some sanitary issues here, right? And you, 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 you gotta be careful with that. And so really the cremation really was a more kind of a sanitary way of, of, of disposing of the remains of the dead. You still did it with all this uh, honor, the procession, um, you would have uh, a tombstone to mark all of that. Um, and you certainly did have burial. Uh, sometimes, but uh, cremation really was uh, more common. Yeah, yeah, I read that um, cremation was more common for like a long time, and then burial started becoming more common like later. And then burial started becoming more common later. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. And certainly in wartime, uh, you would often have uh, cremation of, of the soldiers, uh, yes. just because that was it was a convenient thing to do. So. And then also, what was interesting is they would put like they would paint pictures of the people and put them on the like casket kind of yes and they were like so lifelike that people said they looked like photographs from like now yes what people said yes so. and and i i don't know when or if you you've been to a funeral or the last time you might have been to a funeral um we my wife and i were recently at the funeral for a, a friend of ours uh, father and it was so interesting because at the the viewing in the funeral home they had basically picture boards put up with pictures of the, 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 the man and his family from throughout the years, so everybody could really kind of relive his life and so forth. Very similar sort of thing. And so here we are in the 21st century, and we're still doing something very similar there. Yeah. And then they also did a feast. Yes. Which is interesting because you, it wasn't like they were celebrating the death. But they, I think they were like more celebrating the life of what they had lived. Exactly, celebrating the life. And, and I don't know if you found this, but did you find anything about funeral games, athletic games? I did, but there wasn't a lot on it. Yeah, so, so it's one of the things they did was, especially if the person had been uh, a warrior, uh, is you would have these athletic games to celebrate the person's life. This is what this person did in life, and now we're going to kind of celebrate that. And that really was the origin of, of the... Um, uh, kind of some of the gladiator shows actually started from the what we call the funeral games. Then some of the other sporting events just grew out of that. Um, so yeah, it was a celebration of life. Yeah. And then the commemoration, which isn't like a set thing that we do, but they would pick like a day in or three days in the year called I can't really pronounce, it's called the Parentilia. Pa yeah, pardon. Good, good. And. It was held from February 13th to the 21st. And yeah. They, like, honored their like family ancestry, which isn't, we don't really honor it like on the day here like they did. Right. Which is one of the differences that I noticed. And one of the things we can throw, throw something over to our, our Spanish colleagues, um, and, and you may know some of the, the Spanish classes, we'll talk about this, but the Dia de los Muertos, so the Day of the Dead sort of a thing. And so same, same sort of thing there, to honor the, uh, the parents and the ancestors uh, and so forth. So... Um, question for you, <laughs> crazy question for you. Based on what you saw of ancient Roman funeral practices, would you like that? Would you like any of those aspects to be involved in, in your funeral, which let's hope will be many, many decades from now, many, yes. many years from now. Uh, as you look at that, you think, wow, that would be a neat way to be honored or Oh, wow, that's a little creepy. I hope they don't do that at my funeral. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of it, besides the professional mourners, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'd want to hire people to cry because I hope people are just sad that I died and not acting like it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think other than that, I think the, um, the procession is really yeah. nice, and I would yeah. want 
that at my funeral. So I yeah, mean, most of it besides the fake crying. Except for the, except for the fake crying. There you yes. go. <laughs> Well, again, there's always so much um, that a guest has uh, researched uh, before coming on a show. So is there anything in particular that you want to make sure people get who are listening to this podcast uh, that from your research that you haven't said yet, but you want to say, I, I want to make sure they know this particular thing? Um, I would just make sure, well, I think this is such like a important topic because yeah. it's so like, like obvious in today's funerals how much we yeah. take from them. So I think that they just know like how much we've gotten from the Romans that we yeah. use now. I agree. I, th I think that, that idea of the tradition and just yeah. realizing, you know, we're not just making this stuff up. We didn't just come up with this five minutes ago. Yeah. Human beings have been doing this kind of thing for thousands of years. Yeah. And so we're part of that grand tradition there. Well, thank you, Katie. It's so good to, uh, to have you on the show. And I think this is going to be a great episode. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Rostra. You may check out all our episodes on Spotify and follow us on social media at Garen JCL. That's at G-U-E-R-I-N-J-C-L.